Puppy and I'm a puppetry artist. Hello friends, my name is Karen Ortred and I'm a theatre maker. We're teaching artists at Flushing Town Hall where we believe in global arts for global kids. We're excited to welcome you back to our second series in which we explore shadow theatre together. In this video, we'll make shadows using shapes. For doing this, we need some materials. First, we need a box, cardboard box. So if you finish your cereal, don't throw the box out. Let's keep it. It's going to be very useful. And second thing, we're going to need a pair of scissors um, and also a hole punch. If you don't have a hole punch, don't worry. A, scissor, a pair of scissors will do. And then we need a marker to draw. And then we need some sort of sticks. You can choose either one of it. So I have this uh, barbecue skewer. Uh, this is very good because it's a very uh, thin. And then this is for making our control. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, you can use, if you like Chinese food, uh, you can keep the chopstick after you eat them. Uh, and then uh, a straw will do too. Um, instead of throw them to the garbage, pollute the ocean, might as well we use it, right? And then we need some sort of tape. A masking tape is good if you don't have it. Uh, scotch tape will do. And finally, we need uh, this thing's called breast fastener. It looks like this. Uh, for the joint, if you don't have it, don't worry. Find a piece of string, like a twine or something. Now we got everything. Let's start it. So the first things we're going to do is going to open this box. So if you look at the box, you'll find there's a place they overlap. And then that's where you can just put your finger in and just rip it open. That's it. Very simple. You don't need to use scissors. There you go. And then you can open the whole box, same as the button. You can just rip it open. There you go. They are perfect for the shadow puppets because they are very strong and the light cannot go through, so they can create a very clear, dark, opaque, black shadow. First thing, let's cut off those parts that already bent because we want everything flat. So they just trim this part out, so make sure we don't use them. Now we have this clean and flat uh, cardstock we can use. Um, we're gonna use this half for the puppet and then this half uh, for the scenery. And to start, let's draw some interesting shapes. So you can draw any shapes you like uh, on this side. You can draw like three or four shapes over here. The only thing you have to remember is make sure your shape is not smaller than your feast, but don't make it too big, otherwise you will run out of space. So like as, as big as your fist, that would be perfect. So you can just use a Sharpie and just draw. Draw any shades come to your mind. So now I just draw four random shapes. After that, we're going to cut them out and the magic will happen after that. So these are my shapes. Let's find out what could they be. So pick two pieces. Let's try this two. If I put these two together and make sure they overlap. And the overlap part can be their joint. So this means this can move. Or this we can flip. It doesn't have to be one direction. Maybe I change this direction. And how about this? Can this be somebody's tail? Somebody, whoop, whoop, somebody's open mouth? So you can change all different direction, try different combination. Uh, any shape can do it. For example, this two. I'm looking at 
this looks almost like somebody's head, right? This is like a hair blow by the wing. And maybe this can be a body. So let's put them together. Voila! It looks like a little girl, right? And this is her skirt. Or you see, oh, I don't like her hair look like this. Maybe we can switch. How about this switch to this way? Or maybe we go this way. So this is like her arms and this is her head. So you can keep changing it. I can even do this way. This is like she's looking that way. Profile. So you can constantly change it. The possibility is endless. This is Karen's puppet and she feels like this looks just like her cat. So she's decided to put these two together. So now in order to do so, let's find the joint. This is where they're going to put together and we're going to punch a hole right here on the joint. So right here. And then see, and then we find a same spot on the neck right here, and then let's punch another hole. And we're going to use a breast fastener to go through these two holes. And in the back, you're going to open up the legs like this. See, now they're joined together. So now I'm going to show you how to do the joint without hole punch or breast fastener. First, let's mark the joint. Where the joint is, is right here. So I'm going to mark it and same thing here. And then use the tip of the scissors and just poke it. Make sure your finger is not right behind it. So if you need adults to help you, make sure uh, uh, extend if you have trouble making it see right here and then you twist it a, a little bit make sure the hole is big and round and then we have this twine right here you're going to go through it go through the hole and on one side, let's make a knot and then pull it through and tie another knot in the back and make sure the knot is as close uh, to the hole as possible so they won't be uh, too far away. See? Now they are connected. So let's just trim two ends of the twine. Now I have a puppet that can move. Now we're going to show you how to make controls for your puppets. So first let's have a piece of tape around two inches and find one end of the stick and you can put it 45 degree like this and then you're going to roll it up and you're going to flatten it so what happened is you create a tail at the end of your stick and then this we are going to use it to connect to the puppets so you're going to use another piece of tape about one inch that's enough and then you're going to tape them together See, now I can manipulate the head without using my hand directly on it. If you can find material like feather, pipe cleaner, lace, or tinsel, uh, you can add them to your puppet to make the character more clear. For example, a piece of tinsel as a tail for the cat, a piece of lace as a skirt for the girl. Finally. Add one more control to the body or the tail to help with the movements. I'm going to bring my puppet to the light to see what its shadow looks like. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please.
keep exploring different ways of making shadows and share them with your friends and family. Check out our activity sheet for more fun with shadows. And we'll see you again tomorrow when we'll make scenery for our puppet story. Sai Chien!